Good morning and welcome to Harvest. As you can see, our good friend Randy Z is back. It That's is a good always morning. A, yeah, that makes <laughs> it a very good morning. Hello, I'm Valerie Lowe alongside Chuck Freeby and uh, Stefan Radelich. Drew is in Hawaii mm -hmm. uh, with Making Healthy Choices. By the way, why don't you catch Making Healthy Choices? It will air tonight, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Brand new uh, episodes, not really episodes, but Brand new oh. making healthy choices, yeah. mm -hmm. and I'm still struggling with this fall cold, you guys. So you better tune I, in. I know I'm going to have to tune in, and also want to invite you to watch our special. Our during the week of October 8th, 9th, and 10th, we'll have a special week of programming with Dr. Mike Murdoch. You don't want to miss that. And I believe it is Tuesday, October the 9th, we will have a live audience here at Lassie Broadcasting with Dr. Mike Murdoch. If you'd like to be a part of that live audience Tuesday uh, from 8 to 10 p.m., give us a call here at uh, the number there on your screen and say yes, reserve your spot. Have your friends from church or your loved ones to bring him to hear Dr. Mike Murdoch. Mm -hmm. And you know, when he's here in person, it really, the atmosphere changes. He's yeah, awesome, yeah. Every, you know. We've, we've done this a few times and uh, it's really a great experience, uh, not only for our television viewers with that live audience, but for the people that are there. And so I wanna encourage you if you're anywhere in the South Bend area, seating is limited. So please give us a call today and let us know how many folks are gonna be coming uh, because it is a, it is kind yes. of a, a unique type of thing we do. It is. Hey, you know, b before I get into my story, I, did I not get the memo? Because I see Dean over there in his Seattle Seahawks uh, mm -hmm. jersey, and uh, he was a little bitter in the green room talking about C the Seahawks didn't win the uh, Super Bowl, Super a, few Bowl a few years ago. What's the deal? What happened last night? Well, okay, let, let me try to explain this okay. to people because I know not, a lot of you aren't sports fans. Seattle was playing Green Bay on Monday Night Football. Okay. Game comes down to the final play. Seattle is trailing by five points. There's <laughs> Dean in his Seahawks jersey. And that was the, uh, the signal the official gave at the end of the game. Uh, Seattle throws a Hail Mary pass into the end zone. It, first of all, the Seattle receiver, a buddy of mine, Golden Tate from Notre Dame, absolutely shoves the Green Bay defender out of the way. There's no call made on that. Mm. Then another Green Bay defender appears to have the ball in both of his hands. Okay. Golden Tate has one hand on it. Okay. The official rules that that's simultaneous possession. Wow. And in the rules, it says if that happens, then the goes ball to goes the to offense. the offense, which would make it a touchdown. And that's the ruling to, that was oh made my. on the field, despite the fact that the Green Bay person had two hands on the ball right. and the Seattle person had one. And there was a foul that preceded the one hand even. Right. Mm. Now, there are replacement officials right now working games in the NFL because the regular officials have been locked out by the owners. The regular mm -hmm. officials really? want more money. They uh -huh. want to be hired full time. The league does not want to do that. So they've brought in these replacement officials Huh. And now the feeling is the replacement officials blew the game and there's a big hubbub about this. And if you are on Twitter or Facebook, I would venture to say that there's probably somebody in your news feed that is commenting <laughs> on this game. Mm. Well, you know, there's some talk about replacement candidates, political Really? Do we, I'd love to do that. Can we do that? I know, right? I'm not going to go there. But speaking of <laughs> football. You just did. I know. I had to. I, it was just too tempting. Speaking of football, the University of Tennessee refuses to ban pregame prayers. Hmm. Um, and I thought this was quite interesting because the uh, Freedom From Religion Foundation sent the university a cyst and deceased um, order. letter, order, saying stop praying publicly. But the chancellor has said no. We're going to continue to pray. And uh, he goes on to quite uh, to quote the university. He says the university will continue to allow prayers before university events. And then he cites the uh, Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals ruling that says non-sectarian prayer at public university events does not violate the First, First Amendment. Amendment. Mm -hmm. And Very why good. is this? Why is it always this assumption that if you're out in public and you're praying a non-sectarian prayer that you're somehow breaking mm -hmm. the law? Yeah, uh, that is, that's a great question. <coughs> and it seems to have crept into our social consciousness over the years through a fairly concerted effort that any mention of any kind of religious, uh, you know, communication, prayer uh, in a public setting constitutes Congress establishing a religion. Uh, 
they, that, that side of the argument often forgets, and our side of the argument often reminds, the second part of that amendment, which says, nor uh, Congress shall not establish a particular religion, nor prohibit the free exercise thereof. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we kind of fall into the, well, it's just the free exercise of religion, not Congress establishing anything. But it's, it's really crept into our social conscience over the last 20, 30 years. Yeah, everybody wants to remember the first part of the statement. I shouldn't say mm -hmm. everybody, but the but opponents of Christianity particularly, but the opponents of religion in general, want to remember the first part of the statement, but you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. They don't want to remember the second part of it. And this organization, Freedom From Religion Foundation, is not based in Wisconsin, and it's, mm. not, uh, it's based in Wisconsin, not, and the state yeah. senator um, there in Tennessee is saying, why are you coming over to yeah. our state? Mind your own business. Mind your own business. Tell us, don't tell us what to do. Well, and the other thing is, okay, so we're supposed to stop because of you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what yeah. power do they have? But What's going to happen if they don't stop? Well, they are not going to file a lawsuit. They, they have said the organization Freedom From Religion Foundation is saying that if there's a large public outcry, then the university yeah. will be forced to, uh, to stop praying publicly. So they're just trying but to the instigate opposite, something. Yes, the opposite, the very opposite is happening. Good. It's yeah. good to see that. And I, I just wanted to share a quick story yesterday. Unfortunately, I, the story I shared was a little bit depressing. This is a much more uplifting story. And uh, Matthew West has a new album that's coming out today. It's called Into the Light. And the sixth track on that album is based on the life story of a man out of Iowa by the name of Rusty Bora. Five years ago, Rusty Bora found himself in jail for the second time on charges that had to do with drug and alcohol possession. And he, while he was in jail, he felt like the Lord spoke to him and God put on his heart a dream to open up a different kind of faith-based facility to house men and women who might have drug and alcohol backgrounds or are homeless and coming out of incarceration and needed a safe place to stay. Mm. Matthew West heard about this story and wrote a song called We Are the Broken, which oh. will debut today on his new album. And it's the sixth track on that album, by the way. Did a special concert for Rusty Boroff and mm -hmm. his family down in Franklin, Tennessee, where Matthew West is from. And he's going to be performing up in the Davenport, Iowa area, where Rusty is from, this weekend. Uh, Matthew West says, here's a guy where everybody would have written him off, himself included. Mm -hmm. yep. He's not going to amount to anything. He's been in jail twice, and the guy's just throwing his life away. But what a powerful story of redemption and a second chance that he's turned his life around. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Indeed, a powerful story of redemption. And those are the types of stories we like to hear about here on The Harvest Show. And still to come, Dr. David Ireland explains what it takes to develop healthy relationships with people who don't look like you in his new project, The Skin You Live In. And he's back. Randy Z returns with a mouth-watering fall dish. Get this. We're going to have... Uh, acorn squash and a quick and easy southwestern corn chowder. Ooh. Oh, I can't wait. I'm just so upset that Steph is on that interview and I'm <laughs> not. Hey, and we want to connect with you. Join the conversation at liveatlessie.com, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Ustream. You know what to do. The international news starts right now. It is Tuesday, the 25th of September, 2012. Here's what's happening in your world. President Obama today addresses the United Nations General Assembly. On Monday, he addressed the ABC talk show, The View. On the show, Obama laid out his agenda if he's elected to a second term as president. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? There are all kinds of things I want to do in a second term. Uh, mm -hmm. yep, putting folks back to work and making sure our schools are... Uh, up to snuff, and, and, and you know, we've got uh, another war to, to wrap up. Republican Mitt Romney has said a low capital gains tax rate would encourage economic growth. He's encouraging people to invest. Now, the interview with Obama, which wound up being a mix of politics and personal tidbits, will air today on ABC. Now, while the president was chatting on TV, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton held meetings in New York with key figures in U.S. foreign policy. She rounded off discussions with Middle East leaders with a bilateral with the Egypt President Mohamed Morsi, then switched her attention to another world trouble spot, Central Africa. 
As delegates continued to arrive for the General Assembly, Clinton held meetings with both the Rwandan President Paul Kagame and the Democratic Republic of Congo President Joseph Kabila. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon also held several bilateral meetings holding discussions about the situation in Syria and the economic crisis in Europe. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is among the foreign leaders in New York and he is disputing the suggestion Iran is worried about Israeli threats of military action against his nuclear program. Israel views a nuclear armed Iran as an existential threat but Iran insists its nuclear program is purely peaceful and aims solely at producing nuclear energy. Speaking in a news conference, Ahmadinejad dismissed Israel, refusing to speak of it by name. What are they? What are these scientists? Uh, put the world the map in front of you. Put an atlas in front of you. Iran has been Iran for the last seven, ten thousand years. They have been occupying those territories for the last 60 to 70 years with the support and force of the Westerners. They have no roots there in history. On other topics raised during the conference, Ahmadinejad said Iran favors a negotiated settlement to the civil war in Syria and denies that Tehran is providing weapons or training to the government of President Bashar Assad. Meanwhile, preparations are underway ahead of the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur, which begins at sunset. Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement and the holiest day on the Jewish calendar. Jews across the world traditionally spend the day fasting and praying. In Jerusalem, rabbis led prayers of penitence in front of the Western Wall. That's the holiest site for Jews. Ultra-Orthodox Jews conducted traditional kaparo ceremonies, waving a hen above their head to send away their sins from the passing year. Security has been tightened in the run-up to the holiday with West Bank border crossings closed since Monday night. And emergency services are braced for flooding in some of the north of England's largest cities, including Leeds and Newcastle. Rivers have already breached sandbags in the historic town of Morpeth as relentless rain pours down for a second day. Forecasters warn another four inches of rain could fall on top of what has been a steady downpour. Parts of North Yorkshire have had over four inches of rain since Sunday. Usual total for the whole month of September is just two inches. Houses have been evacuated. Drivers were helped from their stranded cars in Gateshead and Newcastle. Bankments have been strengthened in the town of Hebden Bridge. That town is perilously close to suffering its third serious flood since May. This is my home, the old city of Jerusalem. Since 2002, I have been reporting live on The Harvest Show, bringing you the news and sharing my perspective on challenges facing this ancient city. Tune in for Brian's unique perspective on world events and check out his blog only on The Harvest Show. Hi, I'm Pete Summerall. I'm on the roof of where we broadcast Middle East television from Limassol, Cyprus. From this one location, we're able to reach out to the entire Middle East with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Partners, without your help, we can't do it. You know, it's bright up here, the sun is shining, but you know, Middle East television is a bright light to a dark world. And I believe we're changing lives. Our entertainment programming, family programming, a little bit of sports, and Christian programming are touching lives like no other network can. We're so thankful for Middle East Television being able to reach out across this entire region, but we can't do it without your help, partners. So go to the phone. Be a part of changing lives throughout the entire Middle East. From Limassol, Cyprus, to the entire Middle East, the gospel is going forward. To help bring the gospel to the Middle East, call 1-800-365-3732. Do you sometimes feel you're on an emotional roller coaster up one day, down the next? God never intended for his children to live a life of nonstop fear, stress, anger, and loneliness. He sent his son Jesus to set the captives free. Stop the emotional roller coaster in your life by getting a copy of Living Free by Dr. Lester Sumrall. Living Free will teach you how to deal with life's problems with the truth of God's word. Best of all, it's free. To get a copy, go to harvest-tv.com, that's our website, or call the number you see on your screen today. And now we're joined by Dr. David Ireland. He is the author of The Skin You Live In. Dr. Ireland, it's been a while since you've been on Harvest. Welcome back. 
Oh, thank you so much, Valerie. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Okay, proper etiquette dictates that two things you never talk about at the dinner table, race and religion, yet you dare to go there in your new project, uh, The Skin You Live In. Um, you address the issue of cross-cultural relationships, race. What prompted you to do it? Well, a couple of things, Valerie. Number one, America is becoming far more diverse, and it's been like that for decades now. In fact, even in the city of New York, whites are a minority. 49.6% uh, of uh, New Yorkers are whites, and so they become a minority. We're going through what the sociologists call the browning or the tanning of America, which means then that every one of us, despite our race, whether it's Asian, Latino, uh, biracial, white, African American, whatever the race may be, we have to learn how to get along with one another in a very, in a very solid and healthy way. Okay, and so you, I wrote about it. I'm sorry, go on. So I wrote about it in the skin you live in. Okay, so you asked the question, are you racially attractive? And I was like, hmm. You know, I need to ask my colleagues if I'm racially attractive and, and making sure I build those relationships. What are you asking with that question? Well, that's, it's, it's, I frame the words, and I, it may become a new uh, cliche, so to speak. <laughs> a racially attractive person is someone who makes others feel comfortable in their skin because they are comfortable in their own skin. So if I'm racially attractive, I'm going to be comfortable in who I am. And then when you come into my presence, if you have a different race or a skin pigmentation to myself, I'm going to make you feel comfortable being with me. So I call that type of person a very safe person cross-culturally. I make others feel at home. Okay, so you kind of have earned the right to talk about this, this topic because you're the pastor of, you're the senior pastor and founder of Christ Church, which is right there, located in New Jersey, and you yeah. have a 6,000-member congregation, different nationalities, different races, and I'd imagine that that hasn't always been easy to bring that together. Well, it's, it's difficult. It's, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I just want to know, how did you manage to do it? I think it, it all happened when my wife, Marlinda, when she was expecting our first child, this is going back now 26 years ago when the church began. In fact, two weeks into the formation of the church, uh, she asked me, why don't you, she's expecting our child now, she's pregnant, she has all kinds of taste buds, uh, appetites <laughs> for different things. She said, honey, would you go to the store and get some things for me? And so, weird combination of foods, and so I went to the store as a faithful and obedient husband, been married for that time about three years, and I remember walking down the aisle to take things off the shelf to put in my basket. When I did that, I got in one aisle, I put things in my basket, I looked down the other end of the corridor, and I saw different kinds of people. I saw whites, I saw African Americans, I saw Asians, I saw Latinos, I saw even Native Americans at the other end of the aisle. And at that time, Valerie, the Holy Spirit spoke something to me, and I had never heard the audible voice of God before until that day. And the Holy Spirit said, David, why can't it be like that in my house? And uh, I started crying uncontrollably in the, in the supermarket. And I'm sure the cashier must, may, have, may have thought I was trying to bum some food from her, but <laughs> trying to get free food. But it was, it was what uh, we call a Kairos moment, uh, an opportune time where God just messed me up. And so from that day on, for 26 years, I've been chasing after shaping and building a church that can be a haven for all kinds of people. And it's the heart of God. Well, Dr. Ireland, I see in Scripture and Acts in the upper room, we see this playing out in the Bible. We have, you have a biblical foundation for what you're doing, um, where there were different people, races, nationalities, groups there in the upper room waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. Um, but walking that out on a daily basis, what do you want, you know, readers to take away from your project, uh, The Skin You Live In? Well, Valerie, that's a good question. What I do is I draw th from three worlds, or three of my worlds, so to speak, David Ireland's world, three things. Number one, I, I, I have been pastoring a church out of over 40 different nationalities for 26 years. I draw experience from that. Number two, I function as a diversity consultant to the National Basketball Association, helping players learn how to get along with one another because of the difference in race. Number three, my doctoral dissertation was on the black-white relationship in large multiracial churches in America. I had to go across America and find out how races coexisted, what are the factors that made it easy. What I do with the book for readers is that I put, put myself in a position of being a coach to them. So if the reader had not seen my picture or my face on this uh, show, they would not even know what my race is. I would reveal my race at the end of the book. 
But Valerie, what I do is I function as a coach to the reader. I put my arm around the reader and say, let's walk out now. What are the indicators of cross-race relationships? Let me help you break out of your comfort zones. If you've been hurt, whether been a victim of prejudice or hate crimes, let me help you sh find healing and forgiveness. And then let me show you some of the healthy ways to develop cross-race relationships. And one of the things that uh, individuals must do to be cross-racial is that they must then learn how to create an atmosphere where other, people's, other people feel comfortable in their midst. They do so by conveying mutual respect. And so that's one of the factors. But the book is a real self-help guide. In fact, Valerie, if I may say, if a person goes to the website, the skin you live in dot com, they can download a free study guide that can help be a companion to the book that they can get at any particular bookstore. So now, Dr. Ireland, you've heard it a million times. I've heard it growing up as well. The most segregated hour in America is 11 a.m. And I would even go a little, I'm going to go stick my head out there and say that the separation is so obvious between black and white churches. What are you saying to African-American pastors and to white pastors? How can we bridge the gap? That's a good question. In fact, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was the one who coined that phrase. Yes. You know, and so even now, the statistical information is very alarming. Only 3% of churches in America have at least 11% of that congregation of a different racial makeup than the majority. What I say to pastors is this. If you want to see a cross-cultural, multiracial church, you must be able to stand up and communicate the fact, publicly declare, I, as a pastor, welcome people into my congregation that are racially different than myself. And, and uh, you know, I have the statistical information on that because my doctoral dissertation, I had to measure that and look at it and see what impact does it make to the church when the pastor declares that he or she espouses diversity. Second factor is that the church must be welcoming of people that are different. You do so by creating an atmosphere of accommodation versus one of tolerance. Accommodation says, hey, I'm going to make adjustments in my life. I'm going to make adjustments in my worship style. I'm going to make adjustments in the atmosphere of the congregation so that it's welcoming and embracing of people that are different. And if you say, well, I don't know how I come across, one of the most uh, vulnerable ways is to learn is to ask people that are different than you racially and culturally, how do you interpret me? How do I come across? Mm -hmm. and, you know, how do I come across in terms of being cross-culturally friendly or racially attractive? Do you, feel, do you feel like I accommodate you or do you feel uh, that I tolerate you? And so those kinds of vulnerable questions are going to help us make adjustments in who we are so we can be able to better create an atmosphere that's conducive for cross-cultural ministry. Dr. Ireland, I actually interviewed a pastor who said, you know, that uh, pastors uh, of different races should make it their business to hire people of different um, ethnicities, come from different backgrounds, and then some kind of dismiss that as nothing more than a quota. But you're saying that is not. You're saying to make the, the changes, make adjustments in your worship. I know that there's a pastor that I love, I listen to him all the time, but I don't think I could attend his church because the music would just basically put me to sleep. What do you right. say to that? And I say that, first, we should never deal with tokenism, and mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what that pastor was referring to, because that's not what makes the church cross-cultural. There's a principle called the social exchange theory. And what that theory says is this. The only way that I, from a different ethnic or racial group, will come and be a part of your church is that I gain something from your church that I can't gain from my own ethnic group and the churches that that ethnic group reflects. So at the base of cross-cultural ministry is the whole issue is I gain something. So there's an economic factor there. And I'm not talking about money. And so the church grows cross-racially for one of four reasons. And, and I went through the t extensive uh, literature review and study groups, focus groups to understand this. One reason is the church grows cross-racially is that the pastor, not the preaching, but the pastor, something flows out of that pastor's life, Valerie, that makes me want to drive by 100 churches of my own ethnic group to come and be a part of that person's world. Second reason, and it's not in order of priority, but these are just four clear reasons. Second reason is this, the worship experience. And you talked about that the worship experience is boring. The worship experience in a church that's cross-cultural must be able to be like being in a tossed salad. There must be something for everybody. Mm -hmm. I tell people, I said, if you go to a cross-cultural, transracial church, you're going to hear from Bach to Boogie and from Rock to Rock Mononoff. There's going to be a potpourri of music <laughs> styles that worship the Lord. 
And so the worship experience then must draw people to say that something's going on in the worship experience that's making me be a part of this church. Third reason why the church grows cross-racially is the experience of community. I feel a sense of belonging. I feel value. I feel like I'm at I'm home. I'm with family when I get there, even if the racial group is different than mine because the atmosphere is there. And the fourth is just the sovereignty of God. God showing up in a unique way, and I don't care what the race the people are that are there. I'm going there because that's where the glory is being poured out. Now, let me take a step back and say the book I wrote called The Skin You Live In, it's it's not talking about how do I make the church cross-cultural, which is going to be a, 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 an aspect that's going to be a benefit, however. It's saying, how do, I have, how do I make my life cross-cultural? Because the doorway to organizations, as well as the doorway to the church, are people. 86% of churches grow because of family and friends. That means the church grows because 86% of the people in the church invite their family and friends. The doorway to the church are the people. If I want a cross-cultural church, I must create a cross-cultural people. Now, I'm talking about, in the skin you live in, how do I build a cross-cultural life? How do I establish healthy cross-race friendships in my life where people are going to feel, they're going to feel at home, feel close to me, they're going to feel vulnerable, share with them, they're going to feel a sense of friendship. How do I create those kinds of experience and opportunity? That's what I help coach people on. And so... Uh, well Dr. Ireland, you're starting to break up a little bit, so I'm going to just direct people to your website. If they want to get a copy of The Skin You Live In, where can they go? go to wherever books are sold, they can also go to theskinyoulivein.com if they want to get a download of the free study guide, but also get access to where you can order the book, The Skin You Live In. Great for group studies and for personal reflection. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Ireland. You can also go to harvest-tv.com and click on Show Info in the menu bar for an easy way to connect to Dr. Ireland's site. Don't go anywhere. There's more Harvest coming your way. Every six seconds, another child dies of hunger. The poor spend up to 75% of their income on food. 925 million don't have enough to eat. It only takes $6 to feed a child for a month. Do your part. Call 1-888-832-6384 or visit feedthehungry.org. Do you sometimes wonder what life would be like if you had the energy to do those extra things you want to do, but you just can't? Maybe it's to go for a walk after dinner or spend your Saturdays playing with your kids. If you're tired all the time and you decided that you just always will be, guess what? You don't have to be. Let me introduce you to Making Healthy Choices new and improved mineral concentrate. This new fulvic acid electrolyte mineral formula promotes maximum cell function while sparking your body's electrical conductivity. The best part is, it's only $29.95, and if you call now, we'll even pay to ship it to you. So dial 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com. Our new and improved electrolyte formula gives me dependable energy day in and day out, and I believe it'll do the same for you. Order now, because your better tomorrow starts today. You know, it occurs to me that biblical words like vows and commitments and pledges have somehow lost their meaning in today's culture. But we expect God to keep His promises to us, so why shouldn't He expect us to keep ours? Keeping a promise isn't always easy. Sometimes it requires us to take bold steps of faith. Dr. Lester Sumrall said, when you walk in the faith realm, you must accept the Word of God or you won't make it. For example, God said, if you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay fulfilling it, for the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. And again, he said, when you vow a vow to God, do not delay paying it. It is better you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. God will always honor his promises to you. Remember to always honor your promises to him.
You know, Chuck, at the top of the show, we talked about the University of Tennessee praying publicly during their football games and receiving a cease and desist order not to pray. You know, I was thinking about that, and when I come here in prayer line, <laughs> forget it. Prayer line goes, prayer goes up from this place 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There will be no stopping. We pray here because you call in and you say, play, please, play for, please pray for me, agree with me, and intercede on me, my behalf. And so that's what we do here at Prayer Line. We encourage you to even give us a call right now at 1 800 365 3732. We also encourage you to check out the wonderful resources that we yes. have through the Prayer Line, not only by calling us up, but there's a website, worldharvest.com, that has all kinds of different things, the prayer wall there that talks about the prayer needs and requests. So if you feel that you're in the spirit of prayer, but you really don't know what to pray for, mm -hmm. you can go there and pray for the needs and requests of others. And we talked about that at the end of the show yesterday, Valerie, and I'm really becoming a, a even more and more of a believer that one of the most powerful things that we can do for other people mm -hmm. is to pray for them and to pray for their needs. And sometimes it might be difficult for somebody to express a need. I, I have a lot of people that say, I just need you to pray for my needs right now. And, and you just take that person's name, whether it be Valerie or That's right. Hammer Guy Dustin or, who, or whomever, and you just go to the Lord and say, you know, I don't know exactly what this person mm -hmm. needs, but you do, Lord. And so please, Lord, acknowledge their needs and, and take care of their issues right now. You know, Chuck, I was so glad you talked about that yesterday because I think we just kind of say it loosely, oh, pray yeah. for me, please, or, um, oh, I'm praying for you. But the greatest compliment, the greatest um, gift you can give to, to Valerie Lowe, to Chuck, is to say and mean it, I'm praying for you. And so when we say here at Lissy Broadcasting, we're praying for you, indeed we are. And Chuck, we have a few prayer requests from, uh, they come from various parts of the country and you know, we often get prayer requests from around the world as well. Jerry from Louisiana needs a job, a new job. Uh, Keith needs protection from evil. So I'm not quite sure what Keith is dealing with, but Keith from California, we are in agreement with you. We're going to intercede on your behalf. And, Vera from Oklahoma, she says deliverance from bugs in her house. Well, I know that would drive you nuts. Oh, too. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Marjorie from Pennsylvania needs a good night's sleep. Mm. Yes, we can all use that. We've talked about it here many times on the show, just getting a few hours sleep, and it really affects your day. Um, Lisa from Indiana, her mother broke her hip. Um, also, Clev from, needs, from Missouri needs deliverance from alcohol. Latasha from Louisiana needs strength. So would you do the honors? Well, I will in a little bit, but I also want to acknowledge right now, you're seeing at the bottom of your screen the names of our partners in faith. And we also want to mm -hmm. make sure that our partners in faith know that we are praying for your needs as well. And, and sometimes those are unspoken needs. Sometimes you write in, our partners in faith get a little form in the mail every month that invites them to send back their prayer requests. And we do acknowledge those. We take those up to the chapel at Lissy Broadcasting. You saw some footage from the chapel a moment ago. And we'll be taking our prayer requests, all the prayer requests, whether it's partners in faith, mm -hmm. anything called in here, anything emailed in, we'll be taking those up to our chapel in the month of October, praying over them there. And then when you go to Israel That's in right. November, That's right. we're going to take all of those and pray over them in Israel as well and take them to the Western Wall. Yes, that's one of the highlights. I know Pete loves to personally go to the Western Wall and pray on behalf of our partners, pray for people around the world who have sent in their prayer requests. So start now, send in your prayer request and I'm on my way to Israel. I'm gonna leave Chuck back here <laughs> to do all the work, but I'm on my way to the Holy Land. We're gonna take your prayer, prayer reports or your prayer requests and your praise reports to the Western Wall and personally pray over them. But we certainly want to acknowledge these prayer requests yes. here too, including uh, it looks like Latasha from Louisiana who, who needs strength and, and I believe it's uh, Clev from Missouri who yes. wants deliverance from alcohol. And the bugs. Um, the bugs and yes. the protection from evil. Yes, Heavenly Father. Father, we ask you to acknowledge the Thank needs you, and requests of your people. First of all, Lord, let whatever we do here on earth be an extension of your kingdom in heaven. Lord, we ask that whatever we do is your will for us, not ours. So if there's some sacrifice that we need to make, some ordeal that we have to go through, Lord, 
Let us understand that it's for you. It's for the betterment of your kingdom. Let us be truly your servants here on earth. But Lord, we also know that you are a loving Father, a giving Lord, a generous God. And so we ask that if these things aren't from you, if they're from the evil one, if they're from Satan, yes, we ask, Lord, that you take them away take so that these people can continue to go on with their lives and can continue to go on serving you. They put their trust in you, Lord. They yes, ask Father. you for help. And we know a gracious and loving God like you will not turn your face from your people. And so, Lord, we take these prayer requests to you. We ask you to fulfill them in the name of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I shortened it up a little because we're short on time, but we're back with more harvest after this. Many Christian ministries have desired to bring the gospel of Jesus to Israel, to proclaim his message of God's love to the villages and streets he walked while on this earth. Yet only one Christian network has been broadcasting the message of God's love to Israel for more than 10 years. By God's grace, Lassie Broadcasting has been bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ and the voices of many American ministries to every home in Israel via Middle East television. You can help this great work by becoming a partner in faith for as little as $25 a month. Call today. And today is a great Tuesday because Randy Z is here, host of Comfortable Cooking. And Randy, it's been a while since we've seen you, but yeah. uh, seasons have changed. You know, we, you had a lot of great summer input uh, for our friends and viewers. You know, some great recipes and easy to make things, but now we're kind of moving into a new season. Yeah, we're moving into fall and uh, we decided to do some good warm fall things. We're gonna do an egg corn squash here real quick. Mm -hmm. I brought my friend Chef Mike with me, which, okay. which is the microwave. He's here, he's a short guy. <laughs> because, yeah, he's a little guy, he's kinda of shy too. Um, egg corn squash is great. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to make it, and to save on energy cost and time, it's about an hour, hour and a half in the, fr in the oven. Oh, yeah. But we can do it eight, eight minutes, 30 seconds in the microwave. Okay. And All we right. do have enough time today to do that, so I'm gonna get that in right away. Okay. And then we're gonna make a nice Southwestern style corn chowder. I just mm. can't let go of the summer quite yet. I want mm -hmm. that corn in there. Yeah, so that's yeah a nice, there's still a lot of corn, warm, though. A lot of corn coming in. Nice, warm, hearty dish there. So uh, we're going to do some of that, but so acorn for the squash. squash are not just for uh, decorations. Then. No, just not just set out with the pumpkin. You can actually eat it. So you got your seeds, and all you do is just this really simple. I made some last night for my daughter, and she wants to eat both halves instead of just one half. So that's good. We're just going to add on, just scrape the seeds out, mm -hmm. and just a little stringy. You can do this with the uh, spaghetti squash too mm -hmm. in the microwave. It works really well. And we just take a tablespoon of a softened butter. We'll wipe that off since we cut it. It bleeds a little. Mm -hmm. And that's why I got my glove on. I just like to rub that around. Okay. And that's really simple. All we're going to do is sprinkle a little bit of brown sugar on there and some pecan that's ground down to a meal. Okay. And that's it. And that's we're going to let it, and it we're let it do its thing. Let and Mike take it for eight and a half yep. minutes. Let Mike hope he doesn't drop it or mess it up or anything, but <laughs> he'll take care of it. Um, and this will give us the time to do the other thing. This is a nice side dish when you're doing things at home and you don't... Uh, you don't want to stand over the stove. You can right. get that done right. and right. just pop it in the microwave while you're finishing grilling your meats and things. Wow, okay. So, so we're a little bit of light take, brown sugar? Yep, just got a little light brown sugar. Going to use about a tablespoon or so. Of course, the kids always like a little more brown yeah. sugar. Yeah. It adds a little more. With that. Now it's kind of like a lot of people with bacon. What's not good with bacon? Yep. So then we got our pecan meal. And just sprinkle that on there. Okay. And if you would, I will do the I honors. Pop that oh, down there. Hello, Mike. And we'll get here you go. thing here going. So eight and a half minutes. And hit start. Hopefully, is this going to interfere with the radio? Uh, microphone? Microphone? Is Mike going to mess on, Mike you got, up? You got a pacemaker? <laughs> no, good. All right, good. Eight and a half minutes. It's on okay. the go. I got our, over here we got going on. Going to have uh, our corn. We got one pound. It's a frozen corn. Mm -hmm. We wanted it thawed out room temperature. Okay. It's going to save on our cooking time. We got this if you going. use fresh corn, just cut oh, it off sure, the yeah, cob. Just cut as well. it off the cob. Yep. I always encourage with the vegetables, don't buy them in the can, buy them in the frozen section. There's right. zero sodium and yep. a lot, lot healthier for you. So we're going to try not to set off the 
fire alarm here, and we're just going to get these browned up, kind of charred a little bit, give okay, us a little, give bit, a little of bit of that flavor. Up. Yeah, yeah. And then thing. we're going to go to take those out and reserve them, and we've got our just an over the counter hash brown. Now these this are is, just again frozen yep. hash browns. Yep, at room temperature, and this is the. So you have to peel the potatoes, oh, yeah. and wash yep. the potatoes, peel the potatoes, boil the potatoes. Yep, you're gonna we're gonna cut an hour out of our cooking time right now. So nice. this is the western blend, and all that means is they've got some peppers some in red it, peppers, and sometimes some they, they have peppers. some onions with it, so mm -hmm. that's gonna go good with our dish we've got going on here. Okay. So in our base here, we have a half a cup of cream and we have three cups of milk. And okay. And got that up to temperature already for time. It's foaming up a little bit and there. And we're going to put in, if you would, uh, I have a vegetable base. This is a concentrated base of onion, celery, carrots. Okay. If you would throw that in there, that's going to give us that extra vegetable flavor. All right. And not going to have all that chunkiness of that So this is just like vegetable. a concentrated uh, mirepoix, a little... Yep. Yep, I carry, uh, I mean, they carry all kinds of kinds. I have uh, shrimp, beef, mushroom, lobster, clam. I keep everyone in the refrigerator. They're okay. always coming to one and pounder. And is this, is this supposed to be on? Uh, it'll be okay. Okay. I didn't want to be whisked at all. Yeah, right there, whisk, whisk it in. it. Yep. All right, get that I kind of dissolved in there. want to be careful about scorching that. Uh, yep, yep. So we'll be fine, that's up. Get this blackened and browned up here. And then here we have a teaspoon and a half of an ancho pepper ground up, if you'd throw that in there. That's what kind of pepper? Ancho. That's, ancho. That's going to give us a nice uh, little, a little southwestern. Smoke just not too much heat. And we got a half a teaspoon of the ground regular pepper flakes you see all over the place in your pizza place. Oh, these are just spice. red, red yep. pepper flakes. So the ancho, where do you find that? That's uh, usually in your normal spice section. Uh, you okay. don't have to go to the specialty area to find that. And then we have three quarter teaspoon of just a Mexican style oregano. Oh, you love the Mexican oregano. Yeah, I do. It just gives it that real earthy flavor. It's really good. All right. Wow. So you then they get that all blended in, you just pop the lid back on there and won't have to work you any Yeah, harder. it's definitely got a bit of a southwestern a smell little, to little it. A little smell going on there. Okay, see here we got that all blackened up, okay. ready to go. Yeah, I'm going to put that back. Got the kind of roasted look almost yeah, to it. Yeah, a little it. roasted smell going on too. That's nice. Mm -hmm. And we'll pull that out. Now I'm going to do a half onion here, just going to half a cup of onion. So okay. with that, I'm going to add a little bit of garlic olive oil, and I make this myself when I do my garlic so, puree. Uh -huh. so, so you infuse the olive oil with some garlic. Yep, and we keep that in there and get our mm. popcorn corn popping on us like <laughs> we do. I'm going to just do a half a cup of an onion here. Okay. And this is a sweet onion. Dice them or slice them? I'm going to dice them. Okay. It's all going to get pureed down, so the dicing is going to help it cook faster. Mm -hmm. That's why we chose uh, cubed, uh, cubed because it's going to be a lot faster that way. And this is this type of style of cooking I do on my cooking show. It's over the counter. Don't want to scare anybody. Quick, right. simple dishes. So yeah. we've got 10 or 11 minutes today, and we're actually going to pull this stuff. off. And it's good I was so. cooking a pork loin the other day for my family on anniversary, and uh, kids like, "Oh, this is good. Is this Randy's recipe?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> this is my recipe." I like that. That's good. <laughs> so they 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 know how much respect we've got for you at the Rattlech household. Yeah. You just do a great job. We were at a carnival for three days, uh, a local community here doing a, our barbecue and. My daughter was running around all week, and my oldest daughter were her girlfriends, and they about ate me out of house and home. <laughs> they like coming over. When they, they call to ask to come over, they ask what's on the menu, too. Yeah. <laughs> what's for dinner tonight? Yeah, what, what, what's your dad making? Okay, I'll come over. So we're just going to saute that one up okay. there for like a minute, and we're going to go right into the blender here. We're going to get a food oh, processor. smells good. You folks at home, you're missing out. This smells delicious already. Now we're going to put our potatoes in there. Okay. That's a pound. One pound also. All right. And a little fresh ground pepper on there. And what's Mike what's Mike saying? Mike, uh, Mike's at uh, three minutes and forty-five seconds. All right, we're not overworking him then. I'm gonna put these in here and just get them warmed through, take a minute or so, a couple minutes. Okay. A little bit, just a tablespoon of water to help that. Sweat out a little bit. I feel like I need to stand on a box. <laughs> there we go. Set that there. Good. Get the onion going there. I got some uh, roasted red pepper. You just find it in the jar. We're going to mm -hmm. do a little garnish on the top of that. Mm -hmm. 
And we got a little bit of cilantro that's cilantro. gonna go in there too, give it that southwestern. Okay. A little garnish with some green onion on the top. All right. We've already and got then, the uh, onion. Regular in there. parsley, is that for garnish or is that for that's inside? That's our cilantro. Oh, that's the cilantro, mm -hmm. sorry. And then gotcha. I've got some pepper jack cheese, give it that wow. little heat that we're gonna yeah. microplane oh, on the top so it'll melt good. when we do it. This is gonna be good. And then our corn, we're gonna puree half of it. We're gonna keep the rest. So Okay. You can do go as far as you want with these potatoes. You can get them toasted up brown too, you mm -hmm. know, and get a little bit of that smoky crispness on it. Um, it's all personal preference. So in a matter of uh, 10, 15 minutes, you got a oh, nice yeah. homemade, nice warming, warming yep. corn chowder for the the fall days. And you know, this is this choosing these components will make the people try it because they're yep. not intimidated. Well, I don't like peeling potatoes, then I got to right. boil them. Yeah, yeah. And it's okay. It's just economically, it's just as good. Or even like this vegetable base that you've got, you know, it's just oh, it yeah, you know, a head start there. That's a great head start. And I use so many different kinds. It gives me so many options. You know, even when I'm at home by myself and I go, well, I should eat something and I don't feel like it. I'll just chop up an array of different vegetables and add a tablespoon of that and some mm -hmm. water and I just make myself a real quick soup. soup. It's, a, it's great. It's outstanding. So if you'd hand me that and I can get ready to puree. Okay, that's the uh, that's milk our, and cream. That's milk with... and cream going on there. I'm going to take half of our corn now and get it in here. Okay. The other half's going right in the pot. Okay. We got that. All Mike's right. going to be talking to us here shortly. Yeah, one minute and 40 seconds. All right, so I'll get my lid here. I'll grind this down. Okay, so puree you that, puree that down a little bit. Yeah. These recipes are going to be uh, on our harvest-tv.com website as well as Facebook. You folks at home can print it out. And, sure uh, can. Got my three tablespoons of cilantro in there. I'm going to take a little bit of our nice warm cream. Okay. Careful you don't splash. Not bad. Now grind that up. So it's your, your nicely. choice, chunky or smooth or whatever. I like a medium stream. Mm -hmm. that that's still you... pretty thick there, yep. so that's going to uh, break down when we get it back in the get cream. Get back in the cream, and then that'll thicken that all up together, huh? Yep. I like uh, I like to be able to chew my soup a little and my stews and my chowder. Yeah, especially especially in the fall. You know, as the weather's turning and it's getting colder outside. Yeah, I don't. I want if I start brothing it up, I'm feeling older than I really am, and I'm feeling pretty <laughs> old lately. So <laughs> I like to keep it simple. <laughs> Little chunkiness makes me feel like I have a little youth left in me. <laughs> All right, Mike's gonna beep and I'm gonna spoon and we're gonna be. You got 30 really seconds good. left on the uh, acorn squash. So yeah. you said you could do butter, uh, not butter, yeah. uh, spaghetti squash. You can do spaghetti well, squash right? in there too, okay. yeah. I did a little episode on the show, I did spaghetti squash. I took a turkey injector and I injected it with hot butter. Huh. And then I put it in their hole, and that hole will also bend it so it doesn't explode. Yeah. And it comes out, and you don't have to touch it with nothing. Just just take your fork, and it just turns Jesus into gracious. spaghetti. It's really great. So, you're sticking squash with needles now. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm I'm crazy. <laughs> I even inject uh, I even inject the egg yolk, and then cook the egg with the shell still on, and get the flavor in the yolk. Oh wow. I know you've never heard of that. I have never heard I'm of that. I'm kind of different. <laughs> you know that. All right, here we go. Mike is Watch done with the Mike's acorn be a squash. Hot. Hot plate, hot plate. That's just nice chunky chowder. Okay. When? Val, you want to try some of the chowder? Of course I do. You know, uh, I wasn't going to stay away. You're originally from Ohio, right? <laughs> yes. So, yeah, you got the, you the, go. the corn based uh, food economy. There. Listen, I can see the southwestern okay. blend of yeah. vegetables. Ooh, look at this. Look at this. Wait, 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 oh, okay. Wait. Got it done finished. Wait, wait, wait. There you go. Oh, that looks beautiful. Oh, look at this. Watch this. Oh my yeah, God! Microplane in <laughs> microplaned <laughs> melt. I get love my, my jack job. Cheese. Jack cheese in there. I love Tuesdays. Get some, yeah. I know. <laughs> and my job. Yeah, I missed you guys too. <laughs> One of the crew when I got here now, going. Come on, it's look about at time that. I'm starving. Oh my God! There this go. looks so good. This is like restaurant-worthy stuff here. This mm. is beyond yeah. just Make home sure you cooking. Get a, get a snip. That's oh. going to be a little hot. So. Excellent. All right, let me try a little bit here. Just oh, that's so good. It it's is. Quick. Yeah, it's got a little bit of heat to it. Nice uh, cream, flavors and, and that mm -hmm. southwestern flair to it. And it's still the, the I can feel the texture yep. of the potatoes of the corn. and corn. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Randy, you did it again. <laughs> All right. We'll be eating that squash when we go to commercial. I know that because <laughs> if you guys don't, I will. <laughs> Thank you so much. Again, comfortable cooking with Randy Z. EdwardChristianDining.com is Randy's okay. website. You can always find it by going to our website, harvest-tv.com. You'll find an easy link back to Randy's as well as today's recipes, both on our website and mm -hmm. the Harvest Facebook page. A lot more coming up. 
Stay with us. Wish you were here. <laughs> uh, more for me, or not. <laughs>
Mm. Amen, amen. It's so true. Uh, I found that when we act on those inspirations to obey, the next time around, it's a little bit easier to go ahead and, and, and follow that prompting of the Holy Spirit. It kind of goes back to the gentleman we were talking about in the opening chat today yeah. with uh, the man who was incarcerated and had Jesus put on his heart. Hey, you know what? You need to take this experience and go open up a faith-based home for those who are suffering just like you. Mm -hmm. And how easy would it have been for him to say, yeah. I, I just can't do Can't that. do it. Or not qualified. Can't do it. Or, yeah. And uh, Jesus doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And it's important for us to remember that. No matter how we feel about ourselves, Jesus loves us. He cares for us. And he has some expectations for us. And we're capable of meeting those as long as we trust in him. It's not time to, to put the foot out on the water and say, oh no, I'm sinking. It's time to put the foot out on the water and walk with God. Mm -hmm. And so we ask for you to do that today. We ask for you to trust in God, to trust him wherever he's taking you. It may be a rocky path. It may be like driving in South Bend full of detours and potholes. But ultimately, we'll all get to that destination together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together today. We ask for you to inspire our hearts to serve you as your people, to make you our God, and to love one another as you love us. We thank you for this blessing, and we praise you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we'll see you tomorrow Amen. on Harvest. Amen. Looking for a fresh new way to start your day? Get started with The Harvest Show, a live talk show that offers a dose of inspiration, hot topics, news, and live reports from Jerusalem. Every day, Drew, Stefan, Valerie, and Chuck keep you on the cutting edge of what the Holy Spirit is doing with life-changing stories, lifestyle segments, entertainment, and more. Catch The Harvest Show weekdays on LaCie Broadcasting and on the web at harvest-tv.com. When you become a partner in faith with a monthly contribution to LaCie Broadcasting, you participate with us in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through Prayer Line, International Shortwave Radio, Middle East Television, Spread the Word Bible Distributions, World Harvest Television on DirecTV, LaCie's local Christian television stations, and much more. If you're not yet a part of this effort of spreading the Great Commission to the ends of the earth, Consider becoming a partner in faith today with LaCie Broadcasting. Call the number 1-800-365-3732 or visit the partnerinfaith.com website on the screen. You can join hands with us for as little as $25 a month. Please do it today and know that in doing so, you become a vital part of this ministry and reap the benefits of partnership. Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.